So thank you, Sarah, so, so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. Me I love too. you, Tucker. You're <laughs> lovely. <laughs> and I love you. Your energy is contagious. Anyone that's going to listen to this podcast, you are going to feel so energised after because you just so. radiate it. I love it. Um, so obviously we've discussed what you've done up till now in the intro. Mm. Um, but what I want to really, and I want to just dive in, to be honest, because mm. um we know obviously where you come from and you've had the most colorful career um, that's mm. led you up to this point. And now you've launched a podcast. When was it? It was in lockdown, wasn't it, that you launched? Yeah, it was the beginning of lockdown. We're on a bit of a hiatus at the moment, but we um, definitely want to go back to it because I think it's really important. So I think January, we're going to relaunch season three. Season three. So tell me, what made you start the podcast? What what made that the next move? Am I allowed you? to say what it's called? You are, yeah. You're allowed it's to it, swear. I just, it's a bit sweary, yeah. Um, so <laughs> we we me and my friend Louise are the irregular bitches, and it was I met her through my best friend from school, okay, Joe, and we were just chatting in her kitchen, and we were talking. I think I was talking about hormonal mood swings, and uh, that I was in perimenopause, and 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 she's she Lou has the right balance of anger and indignation when it comes. She's a proper feminist, yeah, and she's got that sort of you know we're not going to take this bullshit anymore sort of thing uh no fucks given all of that stuff in fact I bought her a really nice print of a little girl drawing on a wall and it's and she's put no f's given she's writing and no f's given for her 50th birthday she loved it and uh, and then and I I said to her I've been thinking of doing a podcast maybe we should do one together and it was her that really pushed it forwards and um somebody that I'd been doing voiceovers with a company I've been doing voiceovers with for heart radio were, had a podcast lounge this was just before lockdown and they were looking for podcasters so we sort of signed up with them and did the first two seasons through factory originals and they were fabulous but it was a bit like hiring um an Aston Martin when you can't we can only really afford to drive a mini so like they had so many expensive overheads and we we were ended up massively out of pocket even though we got sponsorship so we left them very amicably and that's why we're taking our time to get yeah. we're going to do it ourselves basically so I'm speaking to another podcasting friend um Alison Perry uh, who's on Instagram as I am Alison Perry and she's like a midlife podcaster so I'm speaking to her tomorrow to get some advice because my husband's an editor I've got all the equipment from recording my scripts for challenge because yeah. I announced the challenge uh, Lou and I can do, obviously you, you and you're only four four streets down from me right now but yes. fact is you could be in America if you needed to be absolutely um, so we're just going to get back to it but it's going to be less it won't be as menopause heavy it'll be more okay. midlife because I, do, you're, I mean, you're younger than me, so you're not perimenopausal yet, but, but I bet you any money. There's, I mean, so there's actually, Eve, there's more, there's how many, what, 14 years between us, but I bet we've got similar struggles yeah. and very similar lives. Certainly our children are similar ages. Yeah, totally. Um, so, yeah, we're definitely going to get back to it because I just think it's a conversation that needs to be had without it being dry. And I, every pun is intended when I say that. Yeah. But, you know, you listen to podcasts and... A lot of them, they have their place, but a lot of them are quite worthy. Like I find, I find there's no humour. I loved what Davina's doing, but it's very serious about the menopause. And I love what Lisa Snowden's doing, but she's much more about the yoga and clean eating and well, and all that sort of stuff. Whereas Lou and I just want to be a bit more real about it and just be go like, yeah, I'll take that supplement, but I'm going to take it with a large gin. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. So so for people who haven't heard the podcast, because I obviously have heard it. And yeah. I, can I just say the one that shocked me the most was the Michelle Heaton one. Oh, uh, well, that was before she get I can t I mean, she, I'm sure Michelle won't mind me telling you, but that was before she gave up drinking because obviously now she's AA. So she's got she's um she's now she's confirmed she's an alcoholic and she's on the wagon. Bless me. Wow. She's in recovery. But Lou and I. So we went into the podcast lounge to do it and Michelle zoomed in um, to the podcast lounge with us from from home. She was about to move. It was 1130 in the morning. And she was swigging from a bottle of wine. Bless her. Oh. And she was really in a state. And I actually, because I know Michelle, I thought she was joking. I thought she was oh. just doing it. I thought she was just having a laugh with me because she is very irreverent. And it's funny, you probably don't see the side of Michelle, but um, we had children at the same time. We were neighbours in Crouch End and she's actually very 
funny and witty. Um, and I, so I thought she was taking the piss. And actually now I feel really guilty because she was clearly in enormous amounts of pain at the time. Yeah. And, uh, Before a bottle of Chardonnay at 11.30 in the morning. Oh, oh, she's hilarious. Oh, Sarah, I'm so sorry. It completely cut you out there. Oh, no. So I can cut, try. I can tell. Whereabouts did it cut it me out? Cut so you out. It, it literally froze from the point you said she was obviously in a lot of pain. Right, OK. Um, so she was obviously in a lot of pain. And the thing about Michelle is, like, she's actually a very funny, witty girl. And um, so I thought she was joking. I didn't realise that she that that she genuinely was swigging. I mean, I because I think I thought to myself, no one drinks swigs from a bottle of wine at eleven thirty in the morning unless they're having a laugh. Yeah. Or, but I didn't realise. Then a few weeks later, I saw on Instagram that she'd gone into recovery, and I was like, oh my god, it was right there. And I felt so guilty because it was right there in front of me and Louise. But and I but I didn't I didn't realise. I mean, I actually no. and now if you think about it. If you now got out, you know, <laughs> some Hendrix, start yeah. pouring yourself a gin tea, yeah. I'd be like, that's kind of not real. I'd be like, I would be like, are you trying to tell me something, Sarah? Are yeah, you trying to tell me you're in hell? Pain? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I'm so glad she's okay now because she's been really through the ringer and I've got a lot of time for Michelle. Yeah. She's a well, even on, sweetie. Even on the podcast, I mean, for her to to go and just for to con- for context for those listening, um, on the podcast, Michelle talks about the fact that she went through menopause when her son was six months old. So she was yeah, really she was a lot younger. Through it. Yeah, because she had she had the BRCA gene. So she had a double mastectomy and reconstruction and she had her ovaries and womb removed. So she had the whole of her reproduction. She had her whole female identity removed, essentially. In her 30s. Um, in her 30s. And they don't, I don't think when they do that surgery, they really, they just go, oh, and you might need some HRT, go to your doctor. They don't sort of prepare you for it. And of course, mm. I, I gave both of my, but gave birth to both my children with C-section. And I think in a similar way, your hormones go into shock when something is happens quickly. So yeah. I think labor is a natural process. And so your hormones, like breastfeeding hormones, you then process follow, it, yeah. Then follow naturally. But when when they pull the baby out the top, your body goes, What the f- just happened here? Yeah. And yeah. so my milk didn't come in for like over a week because it just it, my body was still trying to process what happened. Similarly with Michelle. I think your body goes into a sort of hormonal shock, should we say? Yeah. And so all of this menopause stuff just landed on her at once. And you're just not equipped to deal with it. I mean, it's no joke, is it? That the big gag on, you know, if you follow someone like menopause or mayhem mothers, and we've had her on as a guest as well, and she's very funny. You follow all these menopausal women. The joke is that we're all real drinkers. And I just think uh, that's probably, yeah. you know, it's it's the stress, it's the coping mechanism, isn't it? I'm yeah. actually, I actually can't, ironically, can't drink like I used to because I get really ill. Well, the funny thing is, um, uh, going slightly off topic here is one of one of the mortgage mum team so one of the mm. reasons I really wanted to talk today about the m-word menopause mm. that um you know you're talking about it a lot but we don't hear about it a lot but mm. it's not really talked and I know Davina's just done her thing and it's just starting to get out there yeah. but really it's been this silent topic that you know you just assume happens when you're older and it stops your periods and you know, your only experience of it is potentially your mother's experience that you might witness. Mm. Um, but one of the team that are going through it said alcohol was a major um, contributor to hers mm. and that she, yeah. it, 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 you know, she she was saying about that and that she had essentially had to really reduce the amount of alcohol that she had because of the effect it had, which is it's quite crazy, really. I mean, well, I, and also I think anything, any, like ju- I think you're my diet as well. I, I can't eat shit. Do you know what I yeah. mean? I can't, you know, like, because I teach at performers over in Basildon one day a week on a Wednesday. You see these 20 something young performers at this performing arts school and they're just necking all sorts of crap and drinking coffee and Diet Coke by the bucket load. It makes absolutely zero difference to them. And then all of those things are having a massive impact on me now. Yeah. But, and this is why I think irregular bitches is so important. I am not going to stop having the odd McDonald's. 
be like, what, <laughs> what is life like without a McDonald's breakfast? <laughs> yeah. And, I'm not, and, and, you know, that's why I think, I, I think Davina's amazing, but I don't find her enormously relatable because she has this personal trainer and she has this clean, you know, she does all the clean eating, no sugar, no gluten, no dairy, no fun. You know, it's, uh, and that's just not realistic. Also, I don't know if you've ever, like, I don't know what your diet is like, Sarah, but it's bloody expensive to eat uh, well. I, I am a clean eater by default. Oh, good. Um, oh, who's the clean eater in your family? Hmm. Oh, how do you mean by default? Sorry, I thought oh, you meant because you have well, to Well, no, that's I taught I've taught myself that. Um as you uh, need after. to give me some advice because I, d- I don't eat an enormous amount of junk food, but I can't, I don't I've got a gratin downstairs in the fridge that I'm gonna have later with sweet potato sausages. So there's the good bit. But it's a butternut squash gratin. I mean, it's full of cheese and cream. What's a gratin? I, you know, when you thinly slice vegetables and layer them on top of each other and then with, with like cheese a cheesy and cream. Sauce. Yeah, like I'm, potato gratin's the famous oh, one. Yes, but I've done a squash course. one. <laughs> But I don't. I, but I, just gr- I definitely called that the wrong name my entire life. Sarah. <laughs> I definitely have called it gratin or something. <laughs> I'm like, what's a gratin? I'm thinking of like. Oh, so it's just me being poncy and French. Gratin. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I just I don't think I could. I, I, I certainly I could. I reckon I could be a vegetarian. I couldn't be a vegan. No, I, I think that is a definite level of commitment I've definitely yeah. tried being a vegetarian for my Reiki course once and um, I found it really hard but yeah I, I am a clean eater but I I am very I have a very sensitive body I know this sounds a bit wild but like if I have coffee or caffeine it's likely to provoke some sort of anxiety attack in me really yeah I have I've had to do that because of the levels of anxiety that I was living with yeah and so actually the alternative i.e the the drinking the diet coke or having the coffee it's not worth it exactly so in actual fact my thing for menopause is I think how much more anxious can I get in in my body you know like I'm already eliminating all this stuff for my own benefit you know just for my own so I feel like good most of the time um but but then I hear lots of, I mean, I don't know how woo you are, Sarah. I'm quite... Oh, I'm a bit woo. Oh, good. I'm, read, I'm reading a Gabby Bernstein book at the moment on my run Which in one? the morning. Is it? I'm reading uh, The Universe Has Your has Back. Has Your Back. Great book. I love that book. That book no, I, really you know what? I, after this big bust up I had with a friend of mine over the weekend, um, I just decided I, I had I lost my way I was doing my gratitudes um I, I made friends with one of my sensi customers actually as a gratitude coach and I was doing my gratitude so I was doing my mindfulness I was running every morning or exercising and and I lost my way and uh, and my mental health really suffered so this morning I was like back at it so I downloaded it yesterday on audible I listened yeah. to her while I'm running I, she's I mean she's woo to the woo and she I'm not is, quite that yeah. woo but I like her energy and I think yes. even if it's bullshit Sarah I don't yeah. care because if it makes me feel good and it yeah. makes me a, de- a, a better person, yes. if I am a positive, kinder, happier person as a result of listening to something that's off the charts woo, then let there be woo. Exactly. And you I, know I, mean? I think a lot of people find woo, me included, in a period of struggle, whether that's menopause. Mm. In my case, it was postnatal depression. And then I found the woo. And I didn't care like you. I just thought, I feel so bad. I will do mm-hmm. anything to feel better. Mm. Like, give me Reiki, stick some crystals in my bra. I just need it all. Yeah. Like, just do give it. me anything. Like, I just want to feel normal. So I do, um, but the, the, woo, the woo phrasing around menopause is that there's different stages in a woman's life. And at different stages, you get the opportunity to deal with your stuff, whatever your stuff is that's mm-hmm. in you. We all have different stories and stuff, right? And menopause is um, an unraveling of self. So if you haven't dealt with your stuff, it will unravel yourself and bring it all up. And, and that's, that's exactly what's been happening the last, I'd say the last few weeks, specifically really? since, my, since my period stopped completely. There's a lot of there's a lot of spiritual spring cleaning going on over here. Mm. There's a lot of shedding and there's a lot of reevaluating. And there's a lot of me texting people out of the blue and saying, I'm sorry that I haven't been able to be the friend that you need me to be. 
but I probably can't be that person. Let's part ways. Or getting in touch with people who really mean the world to me and saying, I don't want to lose you. And I'm sorry that we don't see each other. And just being, you know, they're probably getting these messages and thinking, has she gone on the 12-step program? (laughs) And and perhaps in some way I have, but I'm literally, I feel, this sounds so wanky, but I'm going to say it anyway. I feel like I'm entering a completely new phase of my life and it's going to look really different. And there's probably going to be some quite different people in it. And I am a nostalgia junkie, so I don't like saying goodbye to things that have been in my life for a long time I but think I a lot think of us are like that but I think sometimes things and people are right for a certain amount of time mm-hmm. well Holly Willoughby and I were really really good friends donkeys years ago and for one reason or another we drifted apart and and we still will ha- exchange perhaps a yearly text or something or something will trigger me and I'll think of her and and she'll always reply but we never go and I remember when that sort of gradual breakup happened I was really devastated and I remember a wise friend of mine saying people will come in and out of your lives and not everybody will stay forever and that's okay yeah and it is they might be right you know then they they might be right for that time maybe I think sometimes you know and sometimes you crave the time that they represent you know like oh I get nostalgia sickness like yeah like I listen to um oh my god I got back in the car after the school run my kids go to Edwards Fall up the hill um because because the local one was oversubscribed when uh when Hunter was school age too many kids born in 2012 apparently yeah and I got in and uh, Zoe Ball was playing um uh I let the music speak by ABBA so this is way before your time but that's that's the last the last ABBA album before this new one was called The Visitors and it is my childhood and I just sobbed all the way to the little sobbed I was like I just wanted to go back to the time you know the time when I used to listen to that album when I was what I mean this is early 80s so yeah born but it was nostalgia sickness that is it is and um, I have to ask because You know, I've obviously talked about it in the intro, what you've done and stuff. But Mm. what is that like? Like to have because you were, you know, on TV, you were Mm -hmm. living it right in the 90s, wasn't it? Yeah. So I can remember. Was it (laughs) (laughs) was it a conscious decision to step out of that world? No, I got dropped. I got dropped. Really, I got. What happened? Like, I just it's such a fickle world. Yeah, that's exact. That's it. I just, I just drifted out of fashion. I just gently drifted out of fashion. Commissioning editors didn't really want me on their shows anymore. It wasn't a big like I didn't. I didn't break any rule, any unspoken rules. I didn't stop being good at my job. I just drifted out of fashion where some people managed to stay in fashion. A lot of it, and I'm not. This makes me sound bitter, and I'm honestly not. I'm the happiest I've ever been professionally. Flogging wax, who knew? Um, but uh, <laughs> we're, we're going to talk about that in a yeah. minute. <laughs> well, that podcasting is just. In fact, a few of my friends have said you should try and get back into it. And I have zero interest. If, if I'm a celebrity came at me now and said, would you do it? I would say no, would unless you? it was such a large amount of money that I would be stupid. Not, But I know that they don't offer big money anymore. There's not big money in the reality show game. But um, yeah, I just drifted out of fashion and it was absolutely devastating. It's horrible. It's- I was just going to ask that because, I mean people don't talk about this stuff Sarah like this is like the hidden part of that world like yeah but so so many people get dropped Michelle is one of them right she was yeah she was hot property and then I just felt like she she got a few opportunities but nothing really that floated her boat and she was she retrained as a PT and I was always really impressed with that but and I don't have any qualifications I was a ballet dancer so I couldn't go back to doing anything no so it was around the time I had Hunter actually so nearly 10 years ago and I'm so lucky because on my Wikipedia page it says that I gave it all up to have a family which is bullshit but well done me for managing to get that out there <laughs> that is that's a lovely story isn't it I and know I, like, I admire the fact that you're not sticking to that story you could easily have just said that to me right then and gone Say, no I, I, I'm not I gonna lie anymore no. I'm not going to lie anymore like this is, and also there is no shame in in for in not being famous anymore being famous is just another job it's just as important as brokering mortgages it's yeah. just as important it, well it's a lot less important than working for the NHS you know it's just entertaining people but we we put these people on pedestals we do you know Holly and 
feel and oh and divine and, and I'm like get, can we get them off their pedestals please? yeah I'm not even sure that those people are probably happy being on them but and I actually not even those people I'm just thinking of successful tv presenters but influencers and yeah. strictly contestants and it's like they are no better than the guy that puts the mail through my door we're all yeah. you know I'm a great believer in in equality and a respect for everybody but we deify people and it's not it's a really unhealthy culture yeah we live in a world where that is that is the the goal in life like I had a very small um oh you had a taste of it, it didn't I you there a... you go well see you must know how it you because yeah, also but... did you notice after the boys immediately everything goes away oh like, what yes the fuck? What? hang on a minute you wanted my number last week Oh, that's what shocked me the most. And still mm-hmm. to this day, I'm still processing that, that I call it the tidal wave. Mm. You get your face on a screen that's in everyone's living room. Everyone I've ever spoken to or even looked at, interacted with, flooded in to my mm. space. I loved it. I literally loved it. I'm not even you feel lie. amazing, don't you? I loved it. It was what I'd been waiting for my whole life because as a teenager I just wasn't that and then I saw Pop Idol and grabbed onto that concept and thought that's going to be the thing that transforms my life that's going to be what I need and then it was just as good for my lovely teenage self she was loving that um but then like you say you get dropped and the the tide goes out and you're left with the same people that yeah, you were. Yeah, that's left a really with. nice analogy. And because it, it, that's exactly what happens. It's the tidal wave and then it all goes away. And it's, but you know, it's funny because like Sarah Cox, when I did the girly show with Sarah Cox, so she did the first series and I was came in and replaced Claire Gorham for the second se- series, which was more of a success because the second series was just when the Spice Girls got massive. And and also oh. I think Sarah and I were, were very good together, you know, the two Sarahs. And, it, uh, and so in the first one, people can't really remember the first series, but the second se- series people remember. But Sarah said to me when I joined it, because I came from Nickelodeon, so I came from the sort of backwaters of cable telly, and, and Sarah went, oh, just be, just be aware, you'll get all these invites. As soon as this, the series is over, they'll all go away. And I didn't really, really believe her, but she was no. right. Mm. No, yeah, people warned me and I didn't believe them. I just thought, oh, that's a shame for you, but it won't be that for me, and it was. But my question to you is, because... You seem genuinely happier, right? Like you just said, I'm genuinely happy now. Mm. At what point did that happen for you, honestly? Probably only in the last two years. And how many years? You know what? You know what? Okay, so I'm going to come. I'm going to be really. So it was since I started Sensi, and but I think what? So I I can explain this. So you got your new identity. It wasn't even that. There is. So people always go, it's a pyramid scheme with all those network marketing. There's Neil's Yard, there's Body Shop at Home, there's yeah. Avon, you know, Arbonne. you name it. And yeah, exactly. And but there's a culture around those businesses, around network marketing. I think a culture born of people being disparaging about them. And there's a culture of positivity, kindness, um, taking, um, giving more than you take and also woo woo manifesting which I do think is a bit bollocks but but, I actually love it I I mean but I just think what it is is the manifesting thing is not necessarily that if I think it I'll have it it's just that you notice more when nice things happen because you're 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 kind of you're you're wiring your brain yeah Yeah. exactly and that's so it's getting it's starting sensey when I first joined I was like I'm not reading bloody nor here but I'm not reading Gabby I'm not getting into that shit of the, yeah. you know, that side of it. And then you just do, because everybody's doing it. And it's a bit like, everybody's doing, what's the name of that Cranberry's album? Everybody else is doing it. Why can't we? Yeah, yeah. And that <laughs> so then the I started case, yeah. reading the books and 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 it was quite transformative. It was just, and then obviously um, meeting Claire, who was my gratitude coach. And she's such a positive energy. I mean, she still has bad days. It's like, it's not a cure-all, but yeah. it's just, you know what Claire always says, People, she put this on her Facebook the other day and it really resonated with me. She said, um, um, people always think, it's something about the glass half full, either the glass is half full or the glass is half empty. And then she put, mate, I'm just glad I've got the glass at all. Yeah. And that's <laughs> yeah. it. And Love I've that. always been a glass half full. I, I yeah. hate pessimists. And, th- and so then I moved into this network marketing industry that is all about seeing the positive, finding a way, 
being kind and 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 wishing good things for yourself and everyone else and so that's when I just discovered and also I nearly died I nearly this just chucked this one in but I nearly died six years ago I had a bowel obstruction what? and I had a resection yeah it got stuck on my c-section scar and then it twisted around and, uh, and south end south end hospital saved my life um and I got sepsis because um my bowel had twisted on itself and went black and after that I, I had a little bit of a, an epiphany of I don't really want to waste any time feeling miserable because you just don't know what's around the corner. So that's wow. where it started. But I think then you, the memory of you nearly dying fades and then you can start getting back into a cycle of um, negativity and worry and, and self-pity. And then so then and I perhaps went in and out of those cycles. And then I and then I found Sensi and network marketing, the culture around it. And then since then, it's. I'm not saying I'm. Um, happy every single day of course no nobody can be it's not human no, you wouldn't be not. right you'd people would think you're insane as well um, yeah. but it's about knowing when you hit a cycle of negativity and you start feeling the slip it's knowing that you can pull yourself back out of it yes isn't it so how many years have you been doing sensei uh two in january it's only two two years in january yeah i'm just mad about like i've always Two things that like, so my, my gay best friend, Dan, always says, I can't believe that you found the perfect thing to do because I'm obsessed with lights, like yeah, little table me lamps. Too, me too. And I'm obsessed really. with, I've got, there's like four in every room. Like I four, not that. warmers. There's four table lamps. Like I love table <laughs> lamps. You know, the little monkeys. And I haven't got any of the little monkeys holding the light bulbs. I haven't got any of those because they're, they're so trendy now. I thought I can't, I'm too late to the party. Yeah. But I love lamps and I love smell like home fragrance like scented anything smelly I love perfume and so this basically combines the two because the warmers are bright enough you could breathe by them if you have one by your bed yeah um and they're such pretty little table lamps and then you shove a couple of cubes in the top of them and they make your room smell nice I was like we're we're the chicken dinner but but you're doing so many things because you've said just in this podcast you've said you're doing the podcast you've got sensei you do something for challenge didn't you I do I write that's every other week so I've basically got about four jobs that add up to one I know like I'm listening thinking she's got about five jobs going here like I know just the- and I've got well, I'm also going to be doing another one next week I should mention because this sounds great and you'll you'll love this so and I'm, I'm, I'm doing a podcast I'm getting paid for are you so my, fr- my friend yeah my friend Charlie who did my press years ago her and her husband have a, a company called the cult media collective and they're amazing they do loads of stuff and they've partnered with beauty works who's one of their um clients and they're doing a podcast all about hair and guess what it's called? The you Irregular won't. Hair. <laughs> no, The Big Hairy Podcast. Oh, I love that. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so they're going, so one week it might be LGBTQ hair. I think one week we're devoting to um, uh, Black and Asian hair, which has its own challenges. Oh, podcast and then, on and hair. Then hair. And then one week we're doing hair lost so my friend Lizzie Jackson Barrett who lost her hair four years ago almost overnight with halopecia is coming on um so all about hair and how it's tied up in our identities and stuff so I'm really wow. excited that that's a six-parter so I'm recording that next week as well but that'll be done over three days and then it'll be done so and when does that launch do you know when I that's think it, it probably a, hopefully a couple of weeks later I don't know whether they're oh, holding it. I don't even know if I'm allowed to talk about it but I am. oh well, well you are so, I mean I'm well, I figure what what's the I'm I'm giving it some promo. Yeah, that can't be exactly. a bad thing because it no, is going we'll to be stick, amazing. We'll stick that in the podcast. That's so exciting. So you're still doing loads of things, and every other person is like a contact still in that world. So it's very still small the world of TV, isn't it? Really? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. You're still I mean, so well connected. Never. I mean, if somebody, I mean, there's because now I took an age box. So now, yeah. like, where the BBC are kind of like accused of being ageist, you know, there's I. It, if one day somebody came and went, oh, crowbar, come on, Sarah, we need you to do this, we do this. And okay, and I do Talking Heads a lot for Channel 5. You'll see me yeah. pop up on, you know, 90s worst, you know, yes. moments and all best moments and all of those. They always wheel me in for those because I, I'm, you know, sound bite-tastic. <laughs> um, and, that's, and that's always a lovely day out. So it's not completely gone away, but I'm, I'm not going to... There was a time when it was when it started to slide away out of my grasp. And, you know, it's a bit like 
I, I did liken it to having my heart broken. And it's a bit like when your boyfriend starts to fall out of love with you and you know it's happening and yeah. you try desperately to control it. And the more, the more you try to make him love you, the less he wants to know and the yeah. more desperate you look. And that was exactly, that's the best analogy I can think of for what was oh happening. Oh my God, that is such a good analogy, Sarah. And I was just, I, I, I was just acting desperate. And so then Hunter came along and all of a sudden I had something else to throw my love into. And there's and, something so disempowering about being desperate, isn't there? Oh, it's horrible. And I never, and that's why I won't, I'm not going to, I mean, if I really wanted to, Sarah, if I really, really wanted to, I could probably find myself some, you know, shitty little job on a shitty little channel somewhere doing some shitty little show for naff or money. Yeah. I'm not going to, because I don't have the energy and I don't care enough. Yes. But good for you. you. Know I mean, and I'm, and I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go like climbing into people's inboxes and going, please give me a job no. because I would rather be doing all that. I'd rather be at home in Lee with my little network marketing gig and talking to people like you and yeah. doing a few podcasts here and there and writing my scripts and being available to do the school run. Yes. And we're not rich, far from it. We, we sold the London flats. We've got a nice house in Lee. We're very lucky. Um, but, but also, I don't think you can measure success and happiness in pounds either. No. And again, going and circling right back to, to where this conversation started, the menopause and how it brings up your stuff, because I think that's mm. where we were. Yeah. Um, and, and that's it. it. With all of the stuff comes the wisdom as well. As and we learn what that one what we once wanted is not the thing that's yeah. going to make us happy. Yeah. Um, so it's funny, really, because it kind of all circles around, doesn't it? All of these lessons. But going back to the menopause, I think that that is what I once got told, and and uh, certainly watching my mother go through. I don't call her my mother, my mum. <laughs> certainly watching my mum um, go through that, and she didn't get told it was menopause, so she went to the doctor. She must have thought having she was had going panic mad. attacks and thinking she was going mad, and she'd never yeah. had anxiety or panic attacks. But all of a sudden, she didn't want to leave the house. She couldn't fly. She had a panic attack on a train, and it just spiraled and spiraled out of control. And I watched that, thinking, "Mum is having some sort of breakdown. Like this is awful. She was so together mm-hmm. my whole life." And the doctors never once said, like she said to me now, if they'd have said to me, "This is possibly menopause." And there's a react, there's a, a you know a side effect of anxiety. It's very normal, mm. and these are things you can do to help. She said, like I could have had so many years of less suffering because she then couldn't fly for years, and she really had to pick herself apart to really learn how to manage this, yeah, like crazy thing that she felt had overtaken her body. Um, so, and then it's only now recently that she can now look back and go, oh, I think this was menopause. I think that was perimenopausal. Yeah. Um, this is what menopause is and even in the team I was telling you before we went live Mm. one of our team has said she has um she thought she had Alzheimer's her brain felt broken and that for us Mm. was like as a business we just need to do more like this needs to be talked about more yeah we need to know how you support women that are working or mothering or like like you say in midlife but are having these like extraordinary symptoms in their yeah. body um you've spoke to loads of people about this now right so you're yeah. you're like a doctor to me <laughs> so well what I is- certainly I think I think I've been, I'm not obviously a qualified expert but certainly there are certain things that I've been advised to do which are transformative so what are those things in a nutshell I would say um exercising and I know I need to do more strength work you shouldn't really run that much and I'm like because you're it's, okay. hard on, it's hard on older joints so I do need right. to do more strength work but I, so I like strength re- training yeah and I right. will get to that but I also but just also moving because that's it, it that's the, you want to get your endorphins going for that for the happy stuff yeah um, not drinking as much obviously um and I mean I sleep really well anyway and I don't get hot flushes I okay. get hot but I don't get hot flushes, yeah. but also mindfulness, which I know it's like the 21st century buzzword, but it really does help. And having supportive people around you. So what you were saying about the mortgage mum is so key. And I, I, I'm so pleased that, that you're being so supportive to your women who are all amazing. 
I know one of thank them quite you. well. Thank <laughs> you. Yes, thank you. For I, all I mean, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be sitting in the house I'm sitting in if it weren't for you. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> thank you. Um, but um, but yeah, th- I think those things are key. Also, supplement wise, right? I've got there are loads. Right. If you're listening and you, you want to know what supplements to get, it's going to probably cost you a small fortune, but get a pen and paper now. So I take a really good multivitamin um, just to, because un, unlike you, I don't eat that well. So I take Barmaton and then magnesium is key, oh, okay. I think. But that's so that that one's a good supplement for. Oh, and dim. Which dim. is found in dim. It's found in cruciferous vegetables like cauliflower and broccoli. But if you don't eat loads of those, you might not be getting enough dim, and you need it for. for wow. I don't. I, I say regulating hormones. I don't think that's even a thing, but it helps your hormones. It helps okay. your hormone balance or something. Dim. D I M. Um, glucosamine. What else do I take? I well, I've been taking a hair supplement because my hair started falling out. Okay. I'm getting really thin. So I take a hair supplement called Good Hair, which is amazing. I went to the hairdresser the other day and Tammy, my hairdresser, said, oh, you've got loads of new hair growth. She didn't know. Oh, wow. She had a of nothing. So that's been really, that's, that's been really amazing. That's powerful I mean, then, I do yeah. rattle and then um, you rattle. <laughs> I rattle uh, and then folic acid, which I t- actually I have to have vitamin oh, B shots. that was shot. a pregnancy thing, wasn't it? Yeah, folate. It's just good for for, for your blood. So I'm trying to think yeah. what others I take. Oh, you do take a lot, ones. actually. Yeah. I do. And uh, God knows if any of them are working, but I would, you know, I think. But anything helps, doesn't it? Yeah. And I take the magnesium at night because it's meant to help you sleep better and you know what just to be kind to yourself and not run yourself ragged really and try and have the you time what does mindfulness look like to you um well obviously that's your classic mindfulness I've got the um headspace app so I'm good yeah so I love listening to Andy that guy has such an he used to be a monk didn't he Oh, did it? I don't know his yeah. backstory. He's married. Yeah, he's married with two kids now. I think he lives in Switzerland or something, but he used to be a monk to like in the, you know, Himalayas or whatever. So I love him. So I will sit and do that when I get in from my run. If, uh, well, I say if I have time, you should make time, but it, I realize in today's busy lives, it's difficult. It's not always I think that's, possible. Yeah. And then sometimes if I feel like I'm bubbling over or getting really stressed out, if I can escape to a quiet room mm-hmm. and just say to Andy and the kids, right I'm in a grump give me five and just go away well the other thing that I like to do is I re- I love my house to be immaculate it's absolutely like tipping here at the moment because it's sensey everywhere I've had about three deliveries but I love the kids happily playing and I will just fold clothes put them away and then everything's nice and tidy new wax in the warmers yes. all of the warmers on and I can literally when the house is all clean and tidy and it's like cold outside. I get a fire lit downstairs yeah. and then we've got an electric fire in the, we did the back of the house, you know, the usual that we've all yes. done. Yes. Um, and so we've got an electric fire in there, but I get that everything glowing and cozy. And that for me is, is that's my happy place. That's my happy state. You know what? I've never heard anyone describe that as mindfulness, but I love that because I really resonate deeply with what you just said. Mm. Cause yeah, I, that I'm going to add that to my mindfulness list because I see that as me distracting myself, but actually it makes me feel really clear and good. Once yeah, it's when done. isn't I mean Andy says you love tidying. No, I don't love tidying or cleaning. I love yeah. things to be tidy and clean. Yeah. Now, if I could have a bloody living housekeeper, because I did go around to Holly's after she got really famous once, um, when she'd moved into this enormous new house in Barnes, which she still lives in, and she has a living housekeeper. She has a lady. What does that, that li- look like? She has a lady that lives in it. Well, she did have, I don't know now, but back then, I mean, this was about, I mean, Hunter was a baby, I think. So it was about seven or eight years ago. She had a cabin, one of those like self-contained cabins in the back garden that had electric and plumbing and everything. And this housekeeper lived at the bottom of the garden. And I mean, I think it's oh. basically like somebody with a, it's, I think it's like a turn down service. I mean, I, honestly, I never asked her, but I got the impression that. She just scoops up after them all. Well, yeah, I mean, I put my tea, as soon as my coffee cup was empty, it was taken. See, and it, le- uh, it left her with all this time to like play with her kids. She was playing with her kids. And I remember watching her and thinking, oh, I hope you realise how lucky you are. I think she does. I mean, yeah. you could not, could you? How but, could yeah. you not? No. And, and that's and what that looks like. And also like, smile every day. yeah, I mean, you know, and you can leave the house in a mess and come back and it's tidy. Like there's, it's, it yeah. must be like having a fairy 
yeah a fairy, fairy, to live with a, you. a fairy godmother yeah yeah oh we went to, away for the weekend with our friends to center parts and one of the one of the dads said at dinner can you hire people to just do the stuff that's the bit of the rubbish part of parenting so that I can just do the fun bit and I'm like Surely, yes, yes. Nanny. <laughs> <laughs> you can and he's like can you only hire them for holidays I'm like I think you can like I think I think that's the thing there's like a whole market out there I'm sure that... well, it's like like the night that you know like a night nanny yeah because I know people who've had night nannies and they literally bring your baby to you in the night wake so wake the baby well the baby wakes up wakes them up they take the baby to, so somebody told me how it worked they take the baby to you they sit you up in bed they get the baby latched on they stay with the two of you or go depending on what you want them to do while you feed your baby breastfeed your baby and then when you're finished they settle you back to bed and they take the baby away and get them back to sleep even the way you say it is just so right. I know. <laughs> I mean, but that is that's that's wealth. That's next level wealth, isn't that's it? And next also, level wealth. But also, I just think, oh, fucking do it yourself. You <laughs> have the baby. Go through the pain. It pisses me off. It's like you can't have the baby and then cherry pick the good bits. Oh, the baby just sh- sh- did an explosive poo. You deal with it. You know, Madonna's never changed a nappy. <laughs> do you that know makes what? me sad. I, change I just... a fucking nappy, Madge. <laughs> Before you just literally let yourself loose then, I thought, I'm going to ask her what, how she actually feels about this reality. Really pissed off. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> That's, that might be jealousy manifesting itself in oh. anger there. Oh, I'm, or I'm it could happy. be menopause, pre-menopause. Yeah. Is it or pre-menopause it or what's it called? Oh, well, I'm menopausal now. I haven't had a period. No, I'm not. I'm still pre-menopausal because I could have a period next week, but I haven't had one for five months. But you were saying it's making your anger more anger. Yeah, ragey. Although I've always felt like that about people that have fucking night nurses <laughs> and, na- and full-time nannies. And like, I'm just like, I think I would definitely have taken help because I think we all could do when you're a frazzled new mum, you could definitely yeah. take help. Um, I would have taken the help if it was there. But I think I'd love to, I would have worked alongside a full-time nanny. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Rather than just go, I'm going out to have lunch with friends. Yeah. Later. Oh I no, think. absolutely. And, and I think at any time in our life we could do with a bit of help, like a little fairy. Yeah. Like, oh, I'll, I'll do this. You know, it's okay. You go do your meditation. Oh. But then I'm a micromanager. It's like, so I mean, Andy try, really tries to help around the house, but he doesn't do things the way I want them doing, and that must be so frustrating. In fact, I know it's frustrating for him because he tells me. Yeah. So like, the, like the dishwasher, for instance, he just shove. He's a shover. What I call a shover. So he shoves things in, and mm-hmm. I know I could get you know a third more in there when it's oh, really. I full. am a shover. My husband. Oh, Sarah. Is you. <laughs> I'm we a- could not. He literally opened the dishwasher the other day and went, what do you think is going to happen here? Because I'd put a walk on top of the entire bottom row. And he was like, like, just play it out. What do you think is going to happen? How is things going to spin around the bottom if the whole lot's covered by a walk? And I was like, I don't know, but I just know if you close it and put it on, it's done and out of my, out of and my I, life. And I also check the arm will go around because we've got some really big dinner plates. So you have to put, Andy does, he shoves the big dinner plate. And then I open it, see the big dinner plates, <laughs> take them out because they can't go in because they stop the arm spinning. <laughs> there are things is, he has no idea yeah, about. That, yeah. you know. I, I, I don't judge him because I'm literally in Andy's camp, but I sympathise with you because my husband literally gets very <laughs> cross at me for this sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it's um, oh, it's so funny. You do. But I that. wouldn't. I would never like if it got to the stage where Andy and I were literally looking down the barrel of a divorce. I would relax. You know, I, yeah. I realise in the grand scheme. But the problem is, and I don't know whether this will resonate with anybody else, but when things are a tip. And it makes me feel anxious. It makes my, it really gets my anxiety going and I feel out of control. And Andy, and that's, I've always been like that, but of course it's ramped up with having a family, which then coincided with me becoming perimenopausal because I didn't have my kids till I was 40. That was 41 for autumn. So then young children spiraling into into perimenopause at the same time. And you can't expect a house to be, you know, chocolate box perfect. all the time. Yeah, exactly. But I do find it, it's basically, I think a psychologist would say it's a control problem. So mm-hmm. I, I, I feel when everything else is out of control, I can control how the house is. Totally. And, and if the house is in flux, then yeah. my, my brain is in flux as well. So it's usually, and I, I tend to 
um, uh, prioritise cleaning the house over getting shit on the to-do. You know, they talk about the to-do yes. list tonight because I read all those books as well. Eat you the know, frog time is management. one of my favourite Oh, eat that frog. I read, yeah. and I, and Angie and I laugh about that. He was like, I'm going to eat the frog because yeah. he told me, you know, because he hasn't read the book, but he knows yeah. the ethos behind it. Um, but I will prioritise tidying up over... Yeah. I really, really resonate with this. Mm. And I remember once, in fact, exactly what you said, getting told that um, it's, it is that lack of control on the inside of things feel fuzzy. It's our way of, okay, I'm in control of this. Mm. And that then makes a little bit more room here up in, yeah. up in your head. Um, Absolutely. So it is just a control measure. And, and when you've got so much going on, we have to allow ourselves a little bit of, of room there, really. You to know just... what I've realised, though, Sarah? it all gets done yeah you know when you feel like you're feeling overwhelmed and I feel overwhelmed quite a lot but I have to like my my customers don't care if they don't get their wax the day I get the delivery they'll wait a week unless it's obviously time sensitive which by and large it never is they're really easy going they're lovely most of them have become friends it's just ridiculous um but and nobody I mean obviously if it's a script I'm writing there's a deadline but I just submitted this week's just before I came on to you my producer's cool with that. And actually, if I'd messaged him and said, I've had a really tough week with my mental health, can you help me out? He'd go, yeah, I'll write it. I'll help you write it, Sarah. Yeah. You know, so, so people, A, they want to help and be kind and B, it gets done. It's true. And we it just put a lot done. of pressure on ourselves, don't yeah. we? That's, that's what it comes down to. I'm a little bit concerned that I have no idea how long we've been talking for. It is. We've been talking for nearly an hour. Wow. Mm. That has gone so quick. I'm literally on here thinking, oh, I have to remember we're on a podcast interview. Because I know. It's but so they're the nicest, to chat but they're to the nicest ones, I think, when you just feel, and hopefully your listeners will feel like they're just in part, part of, of a conversation. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So, in terms of obviously um, the Sensi, we're going to put everything in the show notes so people know how to get in touch with you there. Mm-hmm. The podcast is hopefully coming back. Um, in and January. the Perry podcast is on its way so we well yeah it's being recorded next that. week and the week after so I presume I mean yeah I mean the, the wheels that that one's that one's got money behind it so hopefully you know you it will be advertised yes on, so we can be able see to buy, it and I shall be singing from the rooftops on my me on my social media channels about it as well so which I love your school run chat so if you have if you follow Sarah <laughs> for nothing more follow her for the school run I deleted run one the now. other day why because I, I was really I'd had a we I didn't have a great weekend it was there was there was uh, uh some there was just some personal dramatic shit going on which happens to us all yeah. and that's why I like to share that stuff but afterwards I, I just thought it might attract a bit because it's funny isn't it but those ones those school run chats they're mm-hmm. the ones that get the most clicks it's clickbait and I didn't really I felt that because there were other people involved I felt like and it's all fine now I'm not getting divorced or anything you know yeah. but it was just a tough weekend and I just thought there are other people involved they can't control this and and perhaps it's not and it fair. could so just it, go yeah yeah and I just thought I don't really and also I could get heat from other people because people get a bit judgy I can't believe you share that stuff no 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 yeah so I actually I'd love to be able to just be completely transparent but when other people are involved I think you have to be a little I wouldn't obviously I you know you protect you change all the names to protect the innocent and what have you but I just thought "Mm, yeah I'll just so it was it was up there for half an hour but normal service will resume today because everything's fine yeah I mean, shit happens, doesn't it? I mean, you walk out the other side, and, and, and you're not expected to be there for people's entertainment all the time when you've got stuff going on. Yeah. Sometimes you have to retreat, but I have to say, I do enjoy them. And on yeah. at the time I was watching them, I was in a bit of a period of you know struggle myself, yeah. and I really enjoyed. I didn't have to have the conversation, but I enjoyed. You went to some show. Um, and then you told us about it the next day. And I just oh, was, was woke that Dave up. Grohl? Yeah, Dave Grohl. Oh, and it was I lovely. And I woke up and was like, oh, I wonder how her how, how she got on with the show and if she had a good time. And then obviously you'd let people know. And then I cried, that, didn't I? I think, talking about yeah, it. Yeah, you did. Yeah, <laughs> it was really emotional. But I thought that's it's really nice because you don't know whose day you're making a difference to when you put those out there because oh, they could be you. someone that's really lonely like that doesn't want to pick up the phone and doesn't want to talk about themselves but wants to be especially people that are working at home, working from home, just to have that kind of, 
it's just nice it's like a nice conversation yeah. without being part of the conversation uh, well we all do it I love it as well I love like I love IGTV and I'll happily yeah. just have so, and, and I love podcasts as well and I love all the audio books I like having people in my ear yes exactly so keep doing your thing as and when you. you feel like it because um it definitely puts your light out there in your on mm. your own terms yeah that's what I like is it's to, it seems to me like you've grabbed hold of all your experience and now you're just living on your own terms unfiltered unedited mm. and that's giving other people permission to kind of follow yeah. your lead so keep hopefully, doing your thing. hopefully it won't get me into trouble <laughs> I think you'll be able to what, handle it if it does I think you'll I'll be all you right. what, I've got some diaries and I'm up in like so my sensory office is in the top of the house and the, the, we've got like a loft cupboard just there and there's a box full of diaries oh they're fun and when things calm down it's all a bit bonkers at the moment but I think in the new year I just I want to what I wanted to do is start like an IGTV every Friday where I just sit for 20 minutes with a cup of tea and just read some diary entries out oh please hilarious. do it because it's so yeah. funny stuff I like that a diary until really I met Andy so literally it's like goes from like being I started when I was 11 and I didn't they got a bit sporadic but I'd, I you know I would have to change the names because I'd, uh, I'd get sued up. that would be a Ferris <laughs> dream as well like oh you know what do you think happened to you? I can tell you on what yeah. exact date this happened yeah, exactly. oh, amazing thank you so much Sarah I have loved oh, it thank today. You. I think it's everyone's gonna Sarah's. love it it's the princess show <laughs> thank you so so much and um yeah any any details that you want to share then just let me know and we'll put them in the show notes and hopefully we'll get you back at some point It'd be nice to yeah. just look in again and see how you're doing yeah and I'll drag you down the Broadway for a cocktail one of these days yeah <laughs> thank you so thank much thank you thank you